Kia ora from New Zealand. <laughs> I couldn't even say that. Kia ora. That was quite good for me. You were not expecting that at all, were you? No. It's like, like an huh? answer phone. Kia ora yeah. from Kia New Zealand. Ora. No, I am Louisa. And I am Caroline. And we are the voices of WTF <laughs> stories and advice. Very bad, bad advice. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's good advice, but I wouldn't take our advice, to be honest. Depends what kind of people you are. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I've taken my own advice sometimes and had an absolute mere. Well, I give people advice for a living. You do? I do. Okay, well then, what, what are you saying don't take our advice? <laughs> like, your I advice think, is the best advice. I think, well, it is actually. But I You're think like, yes, the reason the why I can give such a good advice is because I've screwed it up so you, badly in the past. To be fair, you have had every single possible <laughs> thing that could go wrong. I'm the jailhouse lawyer of issues, as I like to say. So... I think that, but I think I also say that because so people go, what kind of bad advice? Yeah. Because if they say, I give amazing advice, you're like, shut up, bitch. Yeah. You yeah, know, you, do. you don't want to listen to that. That's fair. It's a very fair call. So we're going to tell some stories today, aren't we, Louisa? Oh, yeah. So I had a client the other day who was describing this horrible first date, which I won't go into because she told me she listens to my podcast <laughs> and she made me promise I wouldn't put it on it. So I won't talk about that, but it made me think, and I told her the story of this date I went on years ago. I would have been your age, probably younger, actually, probably mm-hmm. about 23, and met this guy who was super hot, very wealthy, successful. We go on a first date. He took me um, on his father's massive boat and did like this amazing dinner. And then he's like, oh, you want to go back to my place and watch a movie? And I was like, cool. Well, you know <laughs> what that means. <laughs> well, it wasn't it's like easy. that. Too. Yeah. So I go and I wasn't going to because I really liked him. And <laughs> he puts on this movie and it was some, I don't even know where the fuck he got this but some crazy ass like asian porn that with this woman takes off her bra and i literally i shit you not she had nipples the like fingers like i am they would be inches long i'm just imagining the lady from austin powers oh worse worse (laughs) and i'm like what the fuck is that (laughs) you know and he's like oh oh you're not into that you know oh i just really like to see your nipples and then and i'm just like oh hell no no we're not doing this and it was just it was like fetish like hardcore fetish type stuff and i was like "Uh uh-uh i don't like it turned it off i'm going home now and he was just like oh uh, you know women always like this and i can't believe you're not turned on by it and you're real prude and i was like okay that's one thing i have not been called as a prude <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. why would he think that was all good to start playing oh am i like first date you. i said you need to wait till like you're in a relationship before you pull that shit out and even then even then no even then no is that normal no like if that's your thing that's great if you find out a girl has nipples like that then I don't know, win-win, then she can feel accepted. I don't know. It was just weird. That's so, a weird thing to do on a first date. Well, that's a weird... Okay, I like It's a weird thing to do ever. It's like, to put that on in front of you, like, hey, come over, watch a movie. Yeah. Oh, it's an Asian porn. <laughs> it's a, a hardcore weird Asian porn with... Yeah, I don't know. Like, she, it must have been, like, some prosthesis, because I... Or prosthetic-like thing, because I just can't even imagine how anyone actually have nipples like that. But... Yeah, I don't know. So, like, for you, has anyone done anything, like, first date that has just absolutely gone, you're like, nah, done? Not me, but this reminds me of a girl that I used to work with, and she said she went on a first date with a guy, everything going really great, and then he stopped and decided to tell her that he had ball bearings. You've told me this one on the podcast before, actually. Why does someone (laughs) need to tell someone that on the first date? Well, I think, again, they're, like, just putting it all out there. I don't know. I saw some guy recently, it was, like, in the news or social media, and he's literally tattooed every inch of his body. He split his tongue in half, so it's, like, a lizard tongue, and he has all kinds of implants, and, oh, oh, no, no. Actually, date, I've got one. I had a guy tell me that his dad was about five foot tall, 
Mm-hmm. So short. Yeah. And about 180 kgs. And like, I have absolutely nothing against bigger people. Which, what's that in pounds? We have to translate this for our... Okay, uh, I don't know. I'm terrible 180 kgs. Well, well, let's just say large. Quite large. Like large and in charge. That's, that's about it's 400 obese. pounds. It's obese. Yeah, 400 pounds. And I just to. thought in my head, I was like, I've got nothing against bigger people, but why is this a, a topic that you feel we need to How discuss was on he? the first day? Huge. He was, was thinking, tall. Yeah, I was like, are you going to get like well, you're adopted. Now? Or is he going to get real fat? I know. Well, they say that thing where, like, you see the parents and then you're like, guys definitely judge women on their mums. Yeah. When All I brought right. my mum into the office the other day, when she left, the boys were like, oh, she's hot. Yeah. And I was like, can you not talk about Jill like that? Oh, no, I know. In high school, all the guys were like, oh, your mum's a milf. And I was just like, ew, gross. No. But I guess it's better than them being like, oh, you don't look like your mum at all. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> true, so, true. Oh, off-putting first dates. No, I haven't had anything terrible. Mm. I mean, that wasn't that bad. I've just had terrible dates in general where i felt like i was being interviewed for a job yeah that's um well i do that before we meet before the date you do yeah. you send them <laughs> i will a, grill you a, a, a fucking what's it called a um personality attachment type yes. test and relationships yes well i'm not gonna waste my time going out with you unless i know every iota of your psychological status there is but that's just on paper <laughs> what you're getting from them they could be perfect match in real life nah I don't think so. It's just like how Bumble and Tinder, you swipe left or you swipe right. It's like you're literally doing this based on looks. Yeah, and that's important. Yeah, it is and it isn't. But I I feel like the personality and the chat is a thousand times more important than Absolutely. looks. Absolutely. Well, I would agree with that. Because I, yeah. And that's why I refuse to just meet people because, you know, you would match with people that were really hot and then you meet them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to poke my own eyes out with yeah, this Yeah, like they're fork, boring as bitch. Because that will be more entertaining. So, uh, yeah, I'll take personality and intelligence and sense of humor any day. So, as long as they're not a minger. What? What's a minger? Oh, there we go. There's another phrase you don't know. Minger, like rats, quite ugly looking. <laughs> rats? Now, now I'm just being rude. <laughs> Like they look like a rat. No, like rat. Oh, here we go. Another, another phrase I have to describe. <laughs> Rats. That would be like... Um, I think you meant like a ginger. Shit. Like ugly looking. Oh, okay. Oh, so if you call someone rats, they're ugly. Yeah. yeah. I like, know what a ginger is. A ginger head. is like a redhead. Yeah. But, no, yeah, a, but a minger is someone ugly, rough looking. Mm, no, thank you. No, <laughs> thank you on the mingers. <laughs> The other day, my um, boss, he's an absolute legend, love him. He texts me. You're talking about Todd. 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 If you're listening, hello, Todd. <laughs> he um, texts me just randomly out of the blue and he goes, Louie, what does rock mean? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, the kids are using it, the slang term, rock, <laughs> rocking you up. And I just lost it because I know exactly what that means. Do you know, you what, know what rock you up means? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, that's to mean to wind you up. Yeah, right? like winding like, you up. Get you. And then, yeah. <laughs> So now he's been using it, but he used it the other day in the wrong term. Oh, no. He was like, I think we may have been at work drinks, and he was like, we're rocking up. I was like, no. 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 That's not how it works. But it made me think that I feel like there are so many millennial slang terms yeah. that the young people use. I, I need to know this, because yeah, I have teenage daughters, and I'm like, what? Yeah, and they're, they're like, oh, mean? ma'am, just shut up. They're like, it's lit, fam. Oh, and they, I wouldn't uh, use that. My Sorry, daughters yeah. put me on their Instagram. No, not Instagram. Excuse me. Their Snapchat stories constantly. And like I meet their friends and they start like snickering under their breath. And God knows what they've seen me do. I'm afraid, to be honest. I actually, my mum was up the other week and I put her on my Inst- um, Snapchat story <laughs> yeah. being like, we're getting lit up. I, oh, <laughs> Kids like feel like they know me, and they probably see me undressing or some shit. Oh, it wouldn't God. surprise me, or on the toilet. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so I'm going to give you a few a few words. Okay, enlighten the oldie, yeah, yeah, I'll enlighten you. Yarn. I think I've explained this one to you. We so have. Yeah, a yarn would be like a good story or a good a good yarn. So what we're doing right like now, spinning is spinning a yarn. Spinning basically, a yarn. is that where that comes from? Good yeah. chat, good story. That is in young people's vocabulary. But well. is that okay? Is that New Zealand slang, or is that also American? That's I, what I want. I know it's definitely New Zealand and It'd Australian. Be, yeah. I don't know about American. Yeah. Well, you know, most of our listeners are American. Well, these are Kiwi slang terms. <laughs> okay, so we'll lighten you Americans as well. Yeah. Yeah. Battler. 
Yeah. So that's like someone who is, I don't know, doing something really lame, or I'd say that's battler behavior, or they're just a battler in general. Yeah. So kind of like a loser. Yeah. <laughs> Rude, but fair. Yeah. Uh, froth. So you're like, oh, froth. Well, froth was like, wasn't that written on your, I remember when you became friends on Facebook, and there's a picture of you looking quite inebriated with froth written on your forehead. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that was me at Rhythm and Vines, which is a big Frothing at the mouth? New Zealand. <laughs> and my friends had lost me for about an hour. Oh, no. And I turned up back at where everyone was. Everyone always goes front left. And I had gone to the tattoo parlor. It wasn't, it was a fake <laughs> As one. As you do. I'd gone to the tattoo parlor and I rocked up just, hello. <laughs> and I had froth and capital letters tattooed across <laughs> my forehead. Oh, no. Were your they, friends worried for they you? They just oh. lost it. That's very typical of me. So, so that's they, where it's from, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. okay, froth. Standard Lulu. Um, yeah, so that's like lit or rowdy kind of, kind of thing. A banger. So that's a great tune. So if you hear a really oh, good okay, song, yeah. Like, oh, that's a banger. Okay. So it's just to say Bieber's banging, banging. tune. A what? A banging. Like yeah, well, banging. That, well, that's probably a, a abbreviation of yeah. banging. You guys are just copying us, is all I have to say. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, a rager. So yeah, like, I know what a rager, rager. is. Hello. I invented rager. I Louisa. invented rager. No, you did not. You weren't <laughs> even born when I was yelling that shit. But okay. anyways. <laughs> well, yeah, Todd also uses my boss. Rager. rager. Yeah. Like, How are you, rager? <laughs> yeah. Um, and extra, so that's like describing something that's like seems dramatic. So oh, you could be. Oh, like, is that what my daughters mean when they say you, mum, you're so extra? Yes. Yeah, so is that what like, they're saying? So basic. <laughs> so yeah. No, extra. they do not call me basic. I am not a basic bitch. Is all mm, I have to say. Debatable. Hey, hey! I will come <laughs> over there and strangle you with this cord, bitch. No. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. I I am definitely a basic bitch. Um, yeah, so, oh, so am I, who am I kidding? I, yeah, but, yeah and extra. I embrace my basicness and my extra. Yeah. Okay, so, it's so extra. So, yeah, yeah so, that's yeah. kind of basic. Bitch. That would be, extra for me would be someone who would be doing diva behavior. So, yeah. it would be like Ubering from here 500 meters up the road. You'd be like, that's so extra. What's wrong with that? <laughs> that's what I mean, I'd do it. Diva behavior. <laughs> but when you wear seven inch heels, it's hard to yeah. fucking walk down the road. Yeah, so you you are extra. <laughs> I'm extra. No wonder your kids are and calling basic. you extra. Oh, I okay, I get it. You're basic and extra. I'm a basic extra bitch. Oh, no. Great. Feel better about myself now. Mm-hmm. I have a good story for you, Louisa. Let's say. It's a scary client story. And, th- yeah, it's just, it's so interesting why people come what I always say is people don't come to me for the reason why they come right so they'll come for weight loss or biting their nails or they've got a bit of anxiety or confidence or whatever and there's something behind there's something behind it that is like every time they're like I wasn't gonna talk about this so oh god this would be at least five or six years ago this woman comes to me she comes for quitting smoking and she said how she smokes like literally 30 cigarettes a day, right? What? Heavy, heavy smoker and has been for years. Must have a very deep voice. And what's that? She must have a very <laughs> deep voice. I can't even remember now, to be honest. But she said that she had tried hypnotherapy before. It didn't work for her at all. And she was a tough case. And this was her last thing. And I think she was actually getting some serious health issues. And so I thought, well, I'll do some kinesiology with her. And kinesiology is this technique called, they also call it muscle testing. And it's a way of asking the subconscious mind questions. You just have the person put their arms straight out and you apply pressure to it and you ask them yes or no questions. And so if their arm stays strong and it doesn't move, that's a yes. And if it goes weak, it's a no. So I use that with almost every client. I mean, you've experienced yep, it with me. I've heard it. And... So anyway, so I thought, well, I'll just, I just had this feeling there was this underlying reason why she was smoking as heavily as she was. So I do the muscle testing with her. And I, the first thing I asked was, is it safe to quit smoking? Because the conscious mind knows that you shouldn't smoke, right? But the subconscious is, it's a whole nother story. Mm. Whatever you're doing, like if you're binge eating or you have anxiety or whatever it is, or phobia, it's the subconscious that's got a problem, right? And the subconscious runs 95% of the show. So when I asked, is it safe to quit smoking? It said no, right? So then I tried to like pinpoint a period in time when that came about. And it said when she was 35. And I said, what happened when you were 35? And she went, I don't want to talk about it. 
And I was like, do you want to quit smoking? And she said, yes, I do. And I said, well, your subconscious mind is saying it's not safe to quit smoking and something when you were 35 years old happened. So you might as well talk about it. And she said, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. And I said, Trust try me. me. <laughs> try okay, me. Very, very you, intense story. Oh, you cannot shock me anymore. Yeah. Like, I am unshockable. I have yet, well, I've heard some stuff in the beginning that shocked me, but these days I'm like, oh, really? That's all? Yeah. So she tells me that when she was 35, she'd quit smoking for like two years, like hadn't smoked in two years. She'd smoked in her 20s and early 30s, and but she had stopped. And she moved into this house in kind of the countryside. I won't say what country. <laughs> I almost said, but I won't. And it was this beautiful home that she had gotten for like so cheap she couldn't believe it. And well, so bits she, of flashing lights. You know there's something wrong Yeah, there. well, she was like, I didn't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. And, you know, so she had put her stuff away. Like the movers are left. She, she was like pretty much sorted. So she was vacuuming. And, she, and it was this beautiful old home. She's in the lounge or the living room. And she's vacuuming or hoovering, as some people call it. And the vacuum cleaner hits the like hearth of the fireplace. And she woke up three days later covered in blood her boss was waking her up going oh my god right and she wakes up she is she said that it looked like she had tried to slit her wrists and around the house the walls are covered in blood with like well, these no. Sim- no i swear i swear on my mother's life and having an Italian mother, you do not say that unless no, you, you want to die. I know that, I know that <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, you know that too. I know that. Yeah, that's what we have in common. <laughs> and yeah, so there's all these like symbols on the walls in her own blood. So when she, this was Saturday when she passed out or like lost time. And she wakes up, she's waking up Monday evening to her boss shaking her. And basically when she didn't show up to work Monday morning, he called her all day, didn't get an answer. So he finally went to her house. And so he takes her to the hospital. They put it as a suicide attempt. They say that she's basically had a, a mental breakdown and she's in like the mental ward. And she's just like, I don't remember what happened. She had no history of psychosis or mental health issues at all. And she's just like, I don't know what's happened to me. And they're like putting her on all these crazy medications and saying, you know, trying to get her to remember. She doesn't remember a thing. All right. And she's terrified because she's like, what the hell? Like, you know, I mean, imagine mm. that happening to you. You'd just be like, what, what the what? fuck? Yeah. So anyways, a few days later, her landlord shows up and says, I need to tell you something. My first wife killed herself in that home when she had our first child she had psychosis or postnatal like postnatal depression but psychosis so she went into like a psychotic state she killed our baby and she wrote on the walls in blood the same symbols that you did and she hung herself above the fireplace and he had never rented out that house since I don't even have words. What the it's, fuck? Yeah. So I'm like, well, you can't surprise me. But what was, what was interesting for me is like, I don't like watching horror what, films. Then I just don't understand what this is. A, this should be made into a film. I don't understand what. So she hit the fire. And then obviously this lady's come out of the. Her ghost. The sky. Sky. I don't know. I don't know what happened like for me when I work with a client and they tell me stuff like that, I just suspend judgment I just work with what I've got, right? And, and there's so, no chance that she's well, full of gonna, shit. Yeah, I was going to say, it's her. Like, how do you know? Well, she could be. But you know what? I have a very good bullshit detector, mm-hmm. right? And I I believe I really know when someone is telling me. So, yeah. yeah. I'll get clients out there. And I'm like, nah. You're like, you're full eh, of I don't believe you. I believed her. I absolutely believed her. And it, the thing is that she didn't present with that. The only reason why I dug that up was the muscle testing, right? And she mm. really did not want to tell me. And I was like, we are here. Let's do it. And I think, I mean, for me, ever since I was born, people have told me their secrets. I don't know what it is about it's me. And that's why, yeah. some, that's why I do what I do. Because it's like, no matter what I did for a living, people always came up to me and told me their like, deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. So, yeah, and it was... So the second she got out of, before she even got out of hospital, she started smoking. 
So for her, it was this protection yeah. and keeping her safe. And yeah, and I ended up watching that movie. God, what was the name of that movie? I can't even remember. I've never watched a scary film. It's like the, something from like The Shining or like. Yeah, it wasn't that. There was a movie that then was like so much like it. It freaked me out. It came out like right after. Um, uh, it's something with a C. Oh, it's going to drive me The Conjuring. Nuts. Yes. That's what it made me think of. You know what I mean? Of that woman You're who... like the ring or something? Oh. Well, maybe not the ring because that's a creepy little thing crawling on the ground. But. Yeah. So we did a session of that it's safe for her to quit smoking. I totally believed her. Like I really did. And yeah, I got an email from her, I don't know, like six months, a year later. It was, you know, down the time. Totally. I never smoked a se- again. Thank you so much. It was all good, but I think it's like we have these... How do you even get past something like that, waking up covered in your own blood with symbols all over the wall? Like, what the actual... Well, I think like, I think that if she hadn't had that landlord come and tell her that, I she think it would have been worse. She would have thought she was mental. She, yeah, because wouldn't, she would have you? Gone into wouldn't a, you? I yeah, would have been like, oh my God, I've just had a mental breakdown. You've gone to a downward spiral. And you've but when someone out. tells you something like that, you're kind of like, okay, there may be another, another explanation. But then also, I'd never sleep again. <laughs> if something like that happened to me, that's it. I'd have insomnia for the rest of my life. Yeah. That's crazy. I have so many questions. I can't even, like, what? <laughs> How did the, what? I just. Yeah. She was really like cool. Like, you read on the an art, like an article. I know. You always say this. Yeah. But this shit happens to people. I'm telling you. I've got some other good ones. I'll tell it in the next podcast that you're just like, oh, my God. But. I don't know. know. If I'm going to ever vacuum again. No, you'll be fine. I'm not going near my It'd be worse place. to have a dirty floor. It's no, true. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't handle that shit. No. <laughs> so, I don't know. If you go into psychosis, maybe it's not just you. Maybe it's not just you having a mental breakdown. Maybe it's something else. Or maybe she just picked up on the energy of the house. Mm. That could be it as well. Like, I don't think that I know exactly what happened in that situation. But, God, it's fascinating. Very fascinating. There's an article on the Huffington Post that says you can't just be friends with the opposite sex. Now, I know that you think that this is true. You think that you can't have guy or girl mates because you think that the guy wants to get with the girl. I mean, in saying that, I, I've i had a lot of guy mates, mm. but I think they've all wanted to sleep with me. <laughs> See, I don't <laughs> Unless believe they're that. Gay. Like, I have so many close guy friends who like I wouldn't even look at sexually. And they want to fuck you. No. Trust me. No. Yes, they, they do. No yes, they way. Do. They want so, you like, to sit on their face. They would look at me face. like a... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I... You did not just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, <laughs> I feel like I, I have to be your mother sometimes. Like, you are not saying that. Yeah, you should meet my mother. You'll have to meet my mother and you'll see where I get it from. Yeah. I, don't, I honestly, I don't believe it. Though. Like, I understand that people will probably assume that something's going on. Like, I have a really close guy, mate, who like, I'd go on holiday with his family and like him, and like, mm. it would just be me and his family. Yeah. And I'm sure that people would assume something's going on. But like, literally him and I both know that we're 100% just mates. I mean, I've, I've had guy mates... Mm, never mind I wasn't no I'm gonna like, finish mm. that no because but then there is that I know w- how it can happen because I've I've had friends who have been friends with people for years and then one day they're something it just changes and they're just suddenly romantic and they're best friends but also going out yeah but see I cannot imagine that with any of my guy mates I mean I have yeah I'm trying to think if there's any guy mates Say where it. I feel that I no know, I've got I've thinking. got no no <laughs> No, I'm just trying to think. I think now it's a bit different. I'm not so hormonally driven, shall we say. And there's definitely, but they're more clients, right, who I see all the time. And yeah, for me, I would just, not. it's never. Well, if you're ever my client, it's a no-go, right? That's just a, a professional thing. But I think when you're younger, I don't think it's so much, I think women are okay with being friends but then i get a lot of women who are totally in love with their male friends and the men are like "Mm." i think it's like it's fine if you're not sexually attracted to them but i think i would say okay let's say this 50 to 60 percent of the time one of the people in that friendship if it's an opposite sex thing is holding a torch for the other one i think so you don't think so no i really don't I honestly think that you can just be friends and that there'd be nothing there. I think, I th- well, I think it's possible. I didn't say it wasn't possible. Mm. But likely, not so much. 
Unless you're really un- unattractive. <laughs> Unless you're a minga. <laughs> if, you're you're, a minga? if you've got lots of male friends and it's all good, there's a chance you need that to you're get to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's terrible. No. <laughs> I feel like I'm being really mean. Okay, I'm being mean too. I take that back. So, but yeah, I think it's like, I don't know. I think the thing is, is that when you, I mean, I've had this in the past where you've been, nothing's been there in the beginning. You come closer and closer. And then you're kind of like, oh, maybe we should hook up because you're a guy and I'm a girl. And that's what we do when we have that connection. But then I've done that and it's like, nah, and never then mind. Ruined, oh, and it ruins it. Ruins it ruins your friendship. It and you're not into it or they're into it and you're not. And mm-hmm. then that ruins it as well. So I, I would know. never, never hook up with one of my guy mates. No, I'm never going to judge on, you know, whatever, whatever friendships or connections you want to have with people, that's fine. But I think a lot of times it gets screwed up, but you know, hey. Who? What the hell do I know? I've only gone to school for I don't even know how many fucking years <laughs> studying psychology and relationships. So I guess I know nothing, right? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing there. Kakitiano. What does I that mean? Keep, I just keep All I know is the... fuck a papa. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't actually know what kakitiano means. I just know that it's a Maori goodbye. Yeah. So I'm just trying to be cultural because we're in New Zealand. And no one in New Zealand listens to our podcast, so, Louisa. I mean, for all the people <laughs> overseas, if you're listening. Um, Louisa just said. Welcome from. Kia ora. Uh, no. Goodbye from New Zealand. Uh, yeah. What I like about, okay, being American, what I really respect Kiwis for how much they embrace the indigenous culture and respect it. And I think that's amazing because coming from California, I mean, yeah, what do they give the Native Americans? Um, oh, you get to have a casino. And that's pretty much like the only positive thing they've ever done. They've treated those people like ugh, just unbelievable. It's, really? It actually makes me ashamed because yeah. I've had some friends that were from these amazing tribes. And yeah, it's just a tragedy what no, they've it's done. It's so not like that in New Zealand. Everyone's so accepting of all yeah. the cultures. And yeah, it, yeah, I agree. It's great. So... How do you say goodbye in Maori? Maori. Maori. How do you say it? Maori. I Maori. feel like I should know that. But. Uh, yeah. Bye. We're going to do it in Italian. <laughs> ciao. Yeah, ciao. Arrivederci. Ciao, Bella. Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs>